Hello there and thank you for joining us. You are watching Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. Today we are ringing in the new year at home with Lemmy Kilmeister of Motorhead. Yes, people, we are actually in Lemmy's home in Hollywood. And he's coming up, but first, it's entertainment news. My buddies Blue Oyster Cult were recently inducted into Long Island's Music Hall of Fame. Co-founders and original members Buck Dharma and Eric Bloom were both on hand to accept the honor in person at the Garden City Hotel. This was especially meaningful for Bloom because he actually lives in Long Island. Other inductees include Eddie Money and Dee Schneider of Twisted Sister. And All Access Magazine's annual Rock the Toy Box, Toys for Cops, along with the U.S. Marines event held at Pal Paladino's in Reseda recently, was again a huge success. All it took to get in was a nice toy for a needy child. Live entertainment was provided all night long, and many of the music community in L.A. often turn out for the event. Vinny Apice, Carmine Apice, Janie Lane, and many other rock stars have all attended the event in the past. Okay, well, coming up, don't go away because it's Lemmy in the house, actually in his house in Hollywood, to ring in the new year right after the commercial break, so don't go away. You want to get shocked? Then shocked, relived, and the end CD DVD packages by the explosive Feisty Piranhas is a must. Recorded in their own state-of-the-art studio and winners of numerous music awards, live performances with the Misfits, Blue Oyster Cult, now. Look out for their new 2009 release live in SoCal Rock and CD DVD box set. Order your hot Feisty Piranhas merch at FeistyPiranhas.com today. For over half a century, Vandom Wine and Spirits has specialized in the finest rare and hand-picked wines along with a wide variety of unique spirits. Both of their Valley locations also carry a vast array of beers, top-of-the-line cigar products, and beautiful gourmet gift baskets. Come sample wines from all over the world during Vendom's popular wine and cheese tastings and classes. Whether you're on a budget or a high-end connoisseur, Vendom has something for everyone. With two convenient locations in Toluca Lake and Studio City, it's easy to shop Vendom Wine and Spirits. When you really want Italian food, you've got to go to Colombo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club, Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Casual fine dining, succulent steaks and Italian favorites, a full bar, live entertainment nightly. Plus, Colombo's offers lunch and delivery service. When you really want Italian food, you've got to go to Colombo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club, Colorado Boulevard in Eagle Rock. Manja. Welcome back to Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. I am now sitting here in Lemmy's house with, well, guess who? Lemmy! Ring it in the new year. Thanks. Hello. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much for agreeing to let us come into your beautiful home. This ha this home is astounding. It's a mess. It, well, it, but it's a beautiful mess. You've heard that. It's rock yeah. and roll. Tell me a little bit about some of the, um, the things that you collect it, that are in your home. I collect all kinds of shit. I collect. German stuff from the Second World War. I collect skulls. I collected this one. See, this is a good one. Yeah, I collect all kinds of shit. You know. Now, where did you come up with? How did you get interested in collecting war material, war memorabilia? Well, I was born the year it ended. You know the war, so it's nothing special to me. You know, it's only mm -hmm. like the boogeyman for people who don't remember it. Okay. You know, who, who haven't lived through the time when it wasn't voodoo. You know. It's only, it's only a bunch of guys doing terrible things to a bunch of other people, you know. It's happened all through history, you know. Do you have a favorite... How about the Red Indians, eh? Want to talk about them? <laughs> Genocide? Exactly. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a certain piece that you hold near and dear to your heart that's actually your favorite piece that you have here in your home? No, I like all of them. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, I spy something. The camera can't see it, but I see a Grammy in a bookcase over there. What's yeah. that for? That was for a, a cover of a Metallica song. They managed to get the knife in even when they were given us a Grammy. They didn't give us one for one of our songs, you know. Typical. But you got one. Yeah, I got one, yeah. Okay, well, speaking of your songs, you're actually um, on a break right now from your tour, Volcom 08, with the Misfits and other bands. Tell me what that's been like so far. Well, the Misfits didn't play on it, actually, and neither did Airborne. They both cancelled out. Oh. So it ended up just us and Valiant Thor and the Erlang Disaster, who were both great, you know. So uh, that was a good tour. And tell me, uh, what were some of the highlights of the tour? What was your favorite city to visit? Because you went all over the world. Oh, we went all over the states and Canada and 
We didn't go to Mexico this time. I don't know why. Still, um, the best part was when Phil hired a horse in San Francisco, and we went on stage during Testament set. Mickey dressed as a Mexican bandit in front, and then Phil on a horse in a red dress and a pink wig, and me behind him sweeping up dressed as an Arab. It was hilarious. Oh my gosh! And Chuck Billy's going, "I'll never top this." Classic. <laughs> now let's talk about all your tours it, all over the world. Where is your favorite spot to to play, and I, why? I really don't mind. It's, it's nice to see places, but as long as they go hooray, you know, I don't give a shit what the accent is. You know what I mean? I just like to play to people who are enthusiastic, right? You know. Okay. Well, LA is pretty enthusiastic about you, yeah, they're and pretty good. you rarely play here. When is the next time you're going to play Los Angeles as Motorhead? I think in January, actually, um, January, February. Okay. I'm not sure yet. We haven't finalized it. And then, so people can look on uh, Motorhead's MySpace, which yeah. is myspace.com forward slash Motorhead. I Motorhead. Uh, for MySpace, it's just Motorhead. It's imotorhead.com for your website. Yeah, that's the official website. Right, but for your MySpace, which, by the way, I just checked it yesterday, has over two and a half million hits on it, Lemmy. Uh -huh. And that's because of you. I should all send me a dollar. <laughs> yeah, then you... <laughs> hey, that was pretty quick. God, you're quick. You're pretty quick for a rock star. Yeah, right. Now, why do you think you have so many fans? Because MySpace, obviously, goes out to everybody in the world, and there's two and a half million plus profile views on Motorhead's MySpace. So two and a half million people have looked at it in just right. the past few years. Why do you think you have so many fans? And you've been going for decades. That's why we got so many fans. <laughs> but most people fall out of the radar, you know. They're lucky if they have a one-hit wonder song or they're around for five years. A decade tops. But Motorhead just gets bigger and bigger and the fans get younger, I notice. Why do you think that is? I don't know. It sounds like it's young music, you know. I mean, if you didn't see the picture of the guys playing it, you wouldn't know. I mean, it sounds like younger than we look, you know, younger than we are, you know. We've always had lots of kids. We've got three generations coming to the shows now, you know, it's great. I've been there and I've seen them. I've seen uh, grandmas, moms, and their and their sons. Not too many young younger girls there, probably because, what are you, the loudest band in the world, I think? Yeah, and it's, 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 it's that mosh pit thing as well, scares them off, you know. Yeah. It's a shame, though. <coughs> <clears throat> so we got a few with the, on the American tour. We got a few more than last time. So, hmm. well, let's well back, I did anyway. There you go. Well, let's back it up a little bit. Let's talk about how you originally got into music. It's a funny story. At school, you were carrying an empty case. I mean, no, it wasn't an empty case. It was oh, a I guitar it was. I couldn't play. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, and after the exams are finished, you always had that week when they're marking them and shit, and you don't do anything for that week. And this kid built a guitar in one day, and he was immediately surrounded by women, you know. <laughs> and I thought, well, that looks like a good idea. So, And my mother had one hanging on the wall anyway, because she used to play a wine guitar. So I took it to school, and sure enough, it worked like a charm. Hmm. Immediately. And, I couldn't play it, you know. And I see you at the bow all the time. You've got a harem of women around you there, and of, at any concert. I've got I've one around me now, haven't I? There you go. Well, yes, you know I adore you. You know I do. Okay, now all Motorhead fans know that you've got two dots above the O's, and tell me what they're called, I can never pronounce them. An umlaut. And why did you guys put those in? Because it looks mean. Because it looks mean? Yeah. And evil? And see, so you're such a sweetheart. Well, you know, whatever. Whatever. Now, were you the first one to have the omelette? No, Blue Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster Cult was first. I stole it off them, I think. You did? Yeah. Okay. Well, at least you admit it on camera. I think they were the first ones, yeah. And then I think the third was Motley Crue? Does that sound yeah. right? Or was yeah. anybody else before that? that's about that? right. Okay, and so you just have them on there because they they look mean. There's yeah. no hidden. That's why we use the German them. script, you know, because it looks badass. You know, that's the point, isn't it? And it does. And speaking of badass, you have actually written a lot of badass songs for other badass singers like Ozzy, and not a lot of people know. For instance, you uh, wrote name the songs that are big that you did. Ozzy, um, Hellraiser. I didn't want to change the world and Mama, I'm coming home. Mama, I'm coming home. Yeah. That's the one I was looking for. And a lot of people think the legend is is that Ozzy actually wrote that for Sharon. And Lemmy's here to tell you that is not true. Lemmy wrote it. It was funny, man. Ozzy was doing an interview just around that time. And this guy said, I think that this song, Ozzy, is the most personal one you've ever written. And Ozzy went, he wrote it. <laughs> Classic. So took the wind out of his sails a bit. You know. Classic. Now, besides uh, writing songs for other people as well as Motorhead, you're also in another band called Headcat with Slim Jim Phantom and yes. Danny P. Uh, D Danny B. Harvey. Tell me a little bit about that band and how that got started. Well, it's it's me going like 
anal about my roots, you know, going back to the original music I listened to, you know, Buddy Holly and stuff like that, you know. So if you see us build anywhere pot pickers, look in, you know. And you can actually listen to some of that music on MySpace as well. I believe it's yeah. MySpace.com, The Head Cat, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. So, okay, on that note, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, and then when I come back with Lemmy, we are going to go through the MySpace questions that you guys sent in, so don't go away. Want a healthier lifestyle? Feel rejuvenated, slow the aging process, and boost your immunity? Cleanse your body and become super hydrated with Canjin water. Through revolutionary technology, turn your contaminated tap water into great tasting healthier water where vitamins and minerals absorb easily. Canjin water helps normalize blood pressure, release excess body fat, and detox with every glass you drink. Visit our website or call 310-714-3154. Change your water, change your life with Canjin water. And lots of time left in this football game. Hey, how you doing? It's freezing hey, out here. It's been a year, man, but close the door. Oh, a cup of coffee and warm your body. Hey, Uncle Dan, whatever happened to that cute little puppy you had last year? Oh, that year? cute little puppy's grown up. He stays in the backyard now. Hey, look at that line hole. He's in for the end zone for the touchdown. People aren't the only individuals who need warmth and companionship. And welcome back to Focus in the Mix, Denise Ames. I am still with the Lemmeister. Yes, it's me, yes. In his beautiful, awesome home in Hollywood. In my Art Deco mansion, yes. Yes. Now, before we go through the MySpace of questions, I want to mention that your latest release, Motorizer, is yeah. out now? Yeah. And it kicks butt. You know what my favorite song is on there? No. English Rose. It's funny, a lot of people said that. Really? Why yeah. do you think that is? I don't know, because it's unusual for Motorhead, that song. It's an unusual song, you know. I think that's probably why. <laughs> okay, there you go. Now, backing up, everybody that knows Motorhead knows Ace of Spades. Why is that song so popular? Got and again, I have no stood idea. the test of time. I have no idea. You didn't feel it when you wrote it or recorded it? It just was just another song? Yeah, it's just another song. You know, I mean, we thought it was good enough to call the album after it, but that's all, you know, it wasn't an especially wonderful song, I didn't think, you know. But you never know what people are going to go for, you know. Right. Yeah. What's the song about? Because you listen to it's the just words. just about gambling. It's okay. just a word exercise on gambling, you know. Hmm. Well, there you go. Okay, so now we are going to start with the MySpacer questions, and I'll be as fast as I can before we run out of time. Yeah. Okay, this is from Azoro, and she it's all she's actually a female. And this says, what's the difference between Lemmy Kilmeister and God? God's taller. <laughs> <laughs> and God's female, right? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't met them yet. I'm sure there's more than one. Okay, here's the next question. This is from Brad, and he says, I saw a rockumentary once where Lemmy uh, quote, was quoted saying, I'm just a reptile, and I always wondered what type of reptile? A viper? Lizard? What? Probably a dinosaur. Why? I'm the same age. Uh, I don't know, you know, what kind of reptile? Snake, obviously, you know. A snake, okay. And then lizards are lame, you know. Okay, that's fair. All right, this is from Paul in New York, and he says, um, could you ask him if he still keeps in touch with Fast Eddie Clark, and if he ever, ever plans on doing anything with him again? Not really. I was on his, one of his solo albums, singing a track, but that's, um, he did a couple more tracks a couple of years ago for a compilation thing of old Motorhead stuff, but that's about it. I mean, I've got a band, a current band to worry about, you know. Exactly. A couple current bands, actually. Oh, well, yeah, but like, this mode ahead is more important, obviously, than getting back in retro mode, you know. I exactly. Mean, that's not important to well, me. Well, your, your fans are so diehard. I think if Motorhead was no longer around, people would, like, pass out. No, they'd probably switch on to somebody else. No, you know? they like, would. There's I, only I, I one, Lemmy, there's only one Motorhead. Come on, you know it. Oh, well, yeah, there's only one at the moment. <laughs> but I mean, moment. if it was gone, you wouldn't just sit around playing our old records with our pictures turned to the wall weeping, would you? I mean, it's not that bad. I would cry. Yeah, okay. Know, for at least five minutes, yeah, and then, you know, that would do it. <laughs> okay, this is from Peter in Finland. Um, he would like me to read this comment to you. Ah. The current version of Motorhead is, my, is uh, in my opinion, the most powerful one. There and I go. still buy the albums uh, the very day they are released. And he's hoping to see you in Finland soon. Will you be there? Yeah, we're going to Helsinki, yeah. Do you know when? I don't know. You don't know, okay. And then this is from... Did you send you a picture with it? Uh, of him? Yeah. That's him doing the metal sign. Heavy Peter's how he goes on MySpace. Oh, no, He's I don't a think very, 
very nice guy. He sure is. This is from Thomas, and he is from Arizona. Uh, what is your favorite song from any of your favorite bands? That's a good question, actually. That's a big question, isn't it? I mean, they're all encompassing. I suppose, uh, let's see now. How about Jimi Hendrix? And the song? Voodoo Child's Slight Return. And why? Because it's, it's got different people on it from his usual stuff. It's got Steve Winwood on organ, Jack Cassidy from the airplane on bass. Hmm. And uh, it's a really good track, you know, a lot of atmospherics on it. Wow. you got to hear it, really. Huh, and do you know what year that was for anybody that wants it's, to maybe it, look that up? It's on Electric Ladyland, the okay. album. All right, and Jimi Hendrix died in what? 70. 70? 1970, okay. Yeah, because Woodstock was 69. Yeah. Were you at Woodstock? No. Oh, okay. Why not? Because I didn't have a visa. Oh, I'd okay. never been to America then, you know. Oh, uh, when did you first come here? 73. And how long have you lived here in Hollywood? 18 years. 18 years? Oh, so you're a Hollywood guy now, but you yeah. still have such a heavy accent. Well, it's, you know, you don't lose it. I mean, I was 44 before I moved here, right? So you okay. don't lose it after, you, after that. You lose it if you were 20 and you came over, you know. There you go, because it's, it's, it's not quite embedded in you as long as it has been for four plus decades like right. it was for you. Well, right, that makes exactly. sense. But that's what makes you sexy. I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah. The English thing still works, doesn't it? Okay. Yes, it does. Well, I know, because we're boring Americans. See, we don't have accents. Except for the ones who go, are you from New Zealand? You know, like... <laughs> I, and the, I, I hear a big difference, but you guys don't, you know, apparently. Right. No, no, I hear, I hear a difference in New Zealand, but probably not as much as you do. But, you know, yeah. before I forget, I also want to present to you, uh, Thomas uh, has um, an art site on MySpace. It's myspace.com, Free the Souls, and he actually did this drawing of you. Well, have I got it? cornrows. You got cornrows. It's a drawing. It's just his interpretation, but he wanted to give this to you, and I think it's oh, just lovely. You. I think it's great. Thank you, Thomas. Aw, he said thank you. Isn't that cool? Right. So, what does Lemmy do for the holidays? I've not had a holiday since I was 14. We're always working, you know. I mean, we've had about, about three weeks off now, but that's it. I'm going back next week, so it was just a pause, really, you know. So, do you celebrate? What do you celebrate? Christmas? Is that My birthday's Christmas Eve. You get kind of... Really? Puts you off, you know. Huh. <laughs> So, but do you celebrate wherever you are on the road, or is it just another day? Do you do yeah, something? Yeah, it's just another day to really? me, yeah. Huh. I don't really care, yeah. Okay. What is your favorite holiday? Favorite holiday? Mm -hmm. I, God, I don't know. Are you talking about American ones or British ones? You know what? British. You're British. Do British. British ones? I don't know. One that you don't get, like Boxing Day. The day after Christmas, we have Boxing Day. And why is that your favorite? Because it's after Christmas. 